Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. Bit of a request here for a look at Phineas. I did get uh, Harry BS who requested this twice. So I thought, since I haven't really looked at this company before, and it does look um, a little bit interesting in terms of what they do, how they're growing. And also the chart looks interesting as well, not in terms of the share price being an uptrend, it's actually near an all-time low, um, some good support right now. So maybe if you do like the future of the company, perhaps right now is a good time to take a position. However, in saying that, the valuation of the company is quite high, particularly when I compare it to some other SaaS software companies. So this is my first look at Phineas. I'll be looking at the technicals, also some of the financials. And we'll also have a brief look at what they do. Now, to be honest with you, I haven't had a very in-depth look at what they do, just a very close look. So just keep that in mind as I go through this video. I don't have the greatest grasp of what this company is doing in their business, I have a better grasp of how they're performing financially and have a much better grasp of the technicals or the charts and the share price action. So let's have a look at what Phineas does. Phineas, as I've mentioned, is a software SaaS company, and they directly are involved in insurance software, particularly in life, accident, and health. This is an Irish company. In fact, when they IPO'd, if I remember correctly, this was the largest international tech company that did or has listed on the ASX. So that's, this company has been around since 1993 listed on the ASX in August 2019. So that's about six months before COVID-19 financial panic. The CEO and founder of this company is Michael Kelly, fairly large skin in the game, 52.5% holding for him. Uh, that might be a little bit too high for some people. A lot of people do like, a lot of investors do like skin in the game. Research has shown the ideal amount of uh, skin the game is between about 20% and 40%. 52.5% might be a little bit too high because he has absolute power in this company, which is not a bad thing when you come to think about it. So if there is a takeover bid for Phineos, uh, more than likely it won't be successful, particularly if Michael Kelly thinks the future of this company is bright. One of the other biggest shareholders is Kane Anderson Rundick. That is, I think, a fund manager based out of Los Angeles, if I remember correctly. And if you do have a look at the shareholder base, there is a lot of diversity there. A lot of the international funds have invested in this company. The market, and probably the only sticking point for me around Phineos is just the valuation of the company right now, even though it has fallen by a fair bit over the past year. So current valuation is 760 million. That's at a share price of $2.38. And the T code for this company is FCL. Now, let's just have a look at some of the numbers now. Because this is an Irish company, all their financial numbers are in euro. And what I'm going to do here is just compare half-year 2022 numbers to the half-year 2021, just to see how this company has been progressing over the past year. Revenue up 52.6 to 65.5. So nice growth in revenue over the past year. That's uh, about 25% growth in revenue, gross margins around about 65%, and they have grown from last year. The company is operational cash flow positive, albeit on the low side, $3 million last year, $1.5 million this year. And again, these are half-year numbers, not full-year numbers. Not profitable, loss-making by $5 million last year, $4.6 million this year. Fair bit of cash on hand, no debt, $50 million, which is a fairly um, common feature among these sort of companies. A lot of cash on hand, not a lot of debt. Annual occurring revenue is something I do look at for these companies. Also want to see pretty good growth. And we have seen this company grow their annual recurring revenue from 38.3 million this time last year to 51.8 million. So that's about a 33% growth in annual recurring revenue over the past year. Now, the valuation of the company is just probably the biggest negative I can find about Phineas right now. And when you do calculate the EV2 and recurring revenue, I get 13.7. So that is a little bit higher than I would like for this type of company, even though they are growing at a fairly good rate. There is a little bit of hype around this company. 
I have heard Phineas mention in a few podcasts. So when fund managers, particularly in Australia, get interested in a company, and a lot of them do get interested in a company, that can push up the price, the valuation of that company. And I think that has happened with Phineos since they listed on the ASX. What I'm going to do now is just look at their uh, Appendix 4C from the most recent quarter, which will be in the next slide, and just compare it to the Appendix 4C from last year. I'm not going to look at the uh, operational cash flow or the, uh, the cash flow statement from the half yearly, just because I do find there's a little bit more information in the Appendix 4C cash flows. That's why I do prefer them. We also can see some of the numbers, in particular receipts of customers and the operating cash flow of the company for the half year. That's in the second column here. So let's go back one year ago to financial year 21, just to see how this company was performing one year ago. And then we can actually compare how this company has performed in the past year. It says their customers one year ago, 28.2 million. And the company was operational cash flow positive by $3.2 million. So I am surprised that this company's um, Appendix 4C from one year ago did not stick out to me. And more than likely, the reason I didn't follow through with doing more research is just the valuation. I think the valuation of Phineas back then would have been well over $1 billion. They also had a fair bit of cash on hand, 30.7, not quite as much cash as they do have now. The other sticking point for me, more than likely, was the intellectual property. They spent 6.7 million euro on intellectual property. And this does seem to be an ongoing cost for this company. So even though the company was operating cash, operational cash flow positive, they were far from being free cash flow positive. And one of the things they do say is you just take away the capital expenditure, payments for property, plant, and equipment, and that is your free cash flow. I also like to use or look at uh, intellectual property. And if that's an ongoing cost, then I do take that away from operating cash flow to get free cash flow. So Phineas was operational cash flow positive, but was not free cash flow positive. And the main reason behind that was the intellectual property cost. Now let's have a look at the most recent depending for C. Receipts are up. So we probably would have assumed that the receipts were going to go from one year ago. So the receipts were up 5.4 million euros. If I do say dollars here and there, I apologize. I'm just used to saying dollars. But probably the big negative thing from for this company uh, from one year ago to now is even though receipts were up, costs were up by more. Product manufacturing operating costs up 2.8 million. Staff costs up 3.3 million and manufacturing costs up 1.4 million. Together, they equate to costs increasing 7.5 million and not including some other costs uh, like administration or advertising and marketing. So overall, uh, costs were increasing at a greater rate than receipts. And because costs are grow growing at a greater rate than receipts, the company was far from being operate or highly operational cash flow positive. They were operational cash flow positive, by, but by only 663,000 and intellectual property. They also spent a fair bit on that in this particular quarter, 5.4 million. So they were in fact a free cash flow negative by over $5 million when you take, to, to take into account some of the other spending they had. So this company did bleed a little bit of cash. So they began the quarter with 15.4 million, finished it quarter with 48.6 million. There were also some financing and investing activities, which means there wasn't quite that cash burn we would have seen otherwise. Now to the receipts history for Finios. And this is something I like to look at for all companies that release the pennies for C's. And if they don't, they only release half yearlies and yearly numbers. I like to look the revenue growth through time. I want to see revenue or receipts growing through time. It is actually the first thing I always look at for a company. If I don't see revenue or receipts growing, the company is not a growth company at all. I want to invest in growth companies. So for example, banks more than likely won't see their revenue growing through time or all that much, particularly over the last five years. So I want to see some growth. I want to see a company that can grow. And then the next thing I look for is some scalability. So that means they're growing their receipts or their revenue at a greater rate than the spending they're doing. And that's when a company will become profitable, operating cash flow positive, free cash flow positive, and if they can continue growing receipts at a greater rate than cost. They become higher or more and more profitable over time. And that is a company you want to invest in for the long term. Now, through time, since there's this company listed on the ASX, they have grown their receipts. In fact, 
receipts have doubled since the September quarter 2019 from 16.2 million euros to 33.6 million euros. And that equates to a quarterly growth rate of 8.4%. That's pretty nice growth per quarter. That's not per year. That's per quarter. A lot of times you'll see that sort of growth in revenue per half year or even year, and you would be happy. You would be satisfied as an investor. This is per quarter. The other thing you'll notice, it's not a straight line up. Uh, there is a bit of, what do you call it, the wave-like action, a sine wave-like action. So it's been going, it went up for a period, then it came down for a little period, and now it's going back up. The most recent quarter was a record quarter for this company as well. And if we continue to see this sort of growth in receipts, um, growth in our recurring revenue, I think this company eventually needs to show us that they can manage their costs, that they don't have to spend more and more to increase their receipts. And then the next set will be coming um, operational cash flow positive on a consistent basis, which they almost are now, and then free cash flow positive on a consistent basis, and then profitable on a consistent basis. And that's when the company will become productive for shareholders as well as their customers. Now let's have a look at the charts of Phineos. And the first one here is the daily chart going back to October 2020. And really it's not the best looking chart, daily chart. Uh, through this time period because it's really going from the top left to the bottom right. And share price has really taken a hit in 2022, falling from about $4.60 all the way to a current share price of $2.38. I am recording this video on Tuesday, the 29th of March. Share price might be a little bit different now because I did go away for a few days. So I'm recording some videos um, ahead of time, that sort of thing. So uh, just have a look at the share price if you are watching this video after the, after about the 30th of March because the share price could be different than it is now because uh, tech companies on the ASX and also on international exchanges have been going on a run lately. But probably the most uh, worrying aspect about Phineas is the share price really hasn't changed over the past three or four weeks, even though a lot of other tech companies' share price have been going on a run. So a nice, well-defined, we'll say short-term downtrend right now with Phineas, but uh, you do get a different perspective when you look at the weekly chart, and it does look way more interesting. So let's have a look at that weekly chart. I'll show you exactly why it is looking interesting for Phineos. When you do look at the weekly chart for Phineos, the main thing you see here is the share price. Right now, when I'm recording this video, is at a real good support level at around $2.40. And the reason that's just a good solid support level, which is depicted by that horizontal dashed line, is because if we go back to 2019 and 2020, particular during the COVID-19 financial panic, the share price of Phineas reached about $2.40. And every time it reached $2.40, a lot of buying came in. And that's why on those weekly candlesticks, if you can see it, there is a long tail on a few of those weeks to the downside. That's telling us there is some buying pressure in the share price of the company. And that is telling us the bulls are in control during those periods. The other thing I'd like to see is a little bit more volume to tell us that there is a lot of buying coming in. And that share price low for this company was around the COVID-19 financial panic when the share price did fall to around about $2.15 for a very brief period of time. And then the share price more than not quite tripled, definitely more than doubled from $2.15 to a high of $5.70, which was reached in August 2020. But ever since that high of the share price in August 2020, the share price has been struggling and it's fallen to its current level at $2.38 when I'm recording this video, which is right on that long term support level. And the last three weeks of trading, we have seen the share price fall briefly below $2.40, and we have seen buying come in. Again, we see these tails to the bottom of the candlestick, which is telling us there is some buy. And in the last week, we have seen increased volume as well. That is telling us there are more interested parties coming to buy some shares of Phineas. Now, the negative thing about this is if we see more selling come in and the share price falls below this support level, that would be a very bearish signal that this support level has not held and then it turns to resistance. So you could probably take a position right now in Phineas, and this is just a 
possible scenario. And if the share price falls and remains below the support level at $2.40, that would be a sell. So a sort of a low risk potential buy for Phineas right now, just because it's right on that support level. That's all I have for this first look at Phineas, a technical and financial look at this company. Probably the only negative thing I can think of with when it comes to Phineas, actually there's two things. It's the valuation of the company. I do think it's a little bit too high. And I think there is a lot of, I won't say hype, but there's a lot of potential growth already priced into the company's valuation. But probably the biggest negative thing about Phineas is just the technical picture. When you look at the daily chart, a well-defined downtrend, not a negative sentiment right now in this company and its share price. But when you take the different perspective and look at the weekly chart, there is some interesting aspects there. Just the fact that it's at a good support level at about $2.40. And there's a different ways you can take this moving forward. If you are uh, a bit of a bull around the future of this company and you're thinking five to 10 years down the line, Right now could be a great position to take, right time to take a position in this company. If you're maybe waiting for a bit of a bounce off this support level, uh, just so you're just in it for a short to medium term, maybe right now is a good time to take a position, sort of a low risk uh, trade as well, because the share price falls 10% from here. Uh, this support level has failed, and then you just sell out at a very small loss. So if you do have any questions about this company, if you know a lot more and you'd like to add your opinion to Phineas, also their future over the next five to 10 years. I'd love to hear your opinion. Otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.